And more and more, the, the deep intrinsic strength of, of the foot, those little muscles, uh, are what control the joints and the stresses on the ligaments. Is that true? During, during it's, the di it's the dynamic gait. It's during dynamic activity, it's the little firing of those little guys that is what stabilizes that foot for push off primarily. And if you have genetically good intrinsic strength or just through your upbringing and environmental factors, you're, you're strong, you're much less likely to ever have any injuries. And there's a lot of research that's backing that now. So it's similar to the spine when you have poor, these little tiny muscles in your spine, when you have poor dynamic stability of those muscles people have back pain. When the little guys are strong, they're, they're pain free. This is the part that I have the hardest thing, yeah. the idea that the foot strengthens, right? Yeah. I can look here at me and everybody around, but those guys that run bare for their whole lives. Their feet are a mess. They're flat as a pancake, and there's a fat pad all the way around the outside. I mean, I was always thought, the foot is a lot of tendons and ligaments. Not a lot of muscle in there, whatever. But I'm just saying is when that foot seems to creep up in size and collapse your entire life, and when it's supported, this was always the thought pattern. If you support that foot, maybe it won't collapse so fast throughout your life. And when I go to the Caribbean and I see these guys, their feet are all absolutely just mashed. And they, like I said, the fat pad's gone from below it. It's only around the outside. These guys can't get shoes on their feet to save their lives because their foot is just such a big flat thing. Which by the way, that does have to be your feet <laughs> So this is the thing I'm wondering, long term, barefoot, these guys feet, they look so this is always the part that I always had a hard time with. The idea is that, you know, back at the beginning of time they're gonna put your foot in a supportive shoe so that it slows that collapse on if you're going out through your whole life. And flat collapsed feet have all kinds of issues too, you know, I mean it's, I don't that's, that's the part that I have is the idea that this is really getting stronger. Like, how much can you do that? You know, I can see it yeah. to, well, as, as a tool, to tool to, you know, to get a feel for the receptors and do these things. But I'm thinking, and then the other, the other flip side on this too is cement. Nobody was, you know, they always talk about naturally as you're on barefoot. Well, cement was never meant. You know, like, that surface is exactly the same every time your foot strikes it. I don't think you need receptors to know. <laughs> it's not going to, you know, like, you know exactly. You figure, well, so what if you throw a cushion on your foot when you're on cement? Or if you don't, I mean, you run for a little while. Those receptors know exactly what's going on. You know, I, so those are the two things that I have a little trouble with the foot breaking down. And what is the long term on that? Does anybody do branding? Yeah. Well, with foot strength, the one way that it's... Because you're saying they get stronger. The misconception with foot strength is, a perfect example is we have patients that come in with really flat feet, elevated feet, and they're, they're seeing us for clamorchitis or knee pain or something. And it's being driven from their overpronation. And when we tell them we're going to strengthen their intrinsic feet, they think, a lot of times they'll say, oh, you're going to give me an arch. You're going to make my foot have a nice pretty arch when I stand up. Or they say, no, we're, we're not. It's, Foot strength is not going to dictate your arch height. Flat-footedness or high arch people, it is a, that is a foot structure. So that's your bony structure. And whether you're high arch or flat-footed has nothing to do with your foot strength. When we look at foot strength from a therapist perspective, and we've done this with a number of studies where we've measured the amount of muscle contraction, what that takes place, the intrinsic foot muscles during dynamic activity, so running and jumping and so forth, they contract right at the point of the explosion, the mid stance, the push off. They fire, and the only reason they fire is to stabilize those little tiny individual bones and joints in your foot. And, and when they do that, it takes the stress off the joints, it takes the stress off the, the ligaments that are holding those joints together. Uh, we want to push off with a fairly rigid foot because we're pushing off with a lot of weight. When we run, it's five times your body weight. When you jump, it's ten times your body weight. So a lot of force is generated into the foot, and those little muscles, their job is to make everything just lock together. So when we say foot strength, from a therapy standpoint, we're talking those muscles have the endurance and strength to kind of contract and stabilize that foot during primarily the push-off phase. So the big theory is when you talk about the, the, the runners like in Africa and they run barefoot their whole life, that's their upbringing. Those intrinsic muscles are obviously well-developed 
and their endurance is far greater than we can ever train any of our patients to be. Um, so I don't know if that's a different perspective than what you see, Randy, because flat-footed flat -footed individuals doesn't mean poor strength necessarily in the, in the dynamic, you know, intrinsic muscles. It's their history will often dictate that. It's all exactly the same looking foot after a while. Yeah, You're absolutely. Right started. <laughs> Does, can't your foot, doesn't your foot get flatter as you run more? So the structure does change. It does, and with age, you, you do just simple gravity. But won't it change your feet faster do get flatter, and primarily because the ligaments stretch out, and the arch does have to collapse to some degree. Some people greater than others, depending on their natural foot structure. And but how come those that run barefoot, it seems to happen to a lot faster? Like well, think about the, like when you run, it's five times your your body weight. That's for that force that generates your feet. That kind of force is going to cause that arch to collapse faster. It's going to stretch those ligaments and tendons out much quicker than having something in there jamming your arch up. Because you you wear a, a, a you know a power step and a motion control you know insert your whole life, um, it's going to do that. It's going to jam your arch up. It's really going to cradle up there, but it's going to take away from intrinsic strengthening. It's going to take away. It's going to take away from proper form and everything. But if you run proper form, can't you come down at not five times your body weight? If you run efficiently, like take this class. Can't you reduce the time of your body weight that you're coming down? I, I think you, you're efficient. If you guys correct me if I'm wrong. You're not you're you're not necessarily just reducing the amount of force, but you're also making it more efficient. It's more of a spring versus that impact. You know, when we make initial contact, our legs are extended and, and almost locked, so it's almost like a they're hitting a break. Mm -hmm. Versus when you're coming down in that mid foot or forefoot, it's almost like a nice general spring landing. So the forces probably obviously do reduce quite a bit, but it's more, you have more biomechanical efficient. You're not, you're not slamming down, you're actually floating. Because like when you run, you probably don't come at five times your body weight. Yeah. Okay. Lieberman's, uh, um, that's the main thing that he was looking at was running across the force plate um, in different conditions. And they found that not only is it less force, but it's also a different force. Mm -hmm. um, that's where you, remember the exact details of it, but um, yeah, just generates a lot less force. Yeah. In the running shoe industry, uh, I had a conversation with a podiatrist once, and it was really interesting because we're so used to neutral stability motion control shoes, and there's three categories, and every consumer follows one of those three categories for the most part. And we're so used to in retail, you know, you watch the consumer walk, and if they roll in, they pronate, so you give them the stability shoe, and if they roll out, they supinate, so you give them a more mobile, cushioned shoe. And in pronation, like your friends in the Caribbean, Randy, um, pronation isn't, isn't bad. And a person can pronate a lot throughout their whole life, and wear a racing flat like a Kenyan and never get injured. And I think they're, like, with foot strength, that there is a range of motion that the ligaments can move in, in the foot that can be developed. And that range can be expanded upon to the point of, you know, if it's, it's a higher end and a lower end at which the foot gets injured, that's a result of improved foot strength. Um, and as that range decreases, that's a, a result of probably wearing more structured shoes. And your chance of injury increases from wearing such structure and not developing the intrinsic muscles. I would say from a sales standpoint, kind of on your point, Lori, is that you really have to know kind of the goal of the clientele. You know, is it they're just getting started and they, they have no real intentions of going minimal, or do they just want to get out there and get going? Like, you know, so from, from a sales standpoint, it really comes down to okay, we got neutral stability motion control. This is generally what you look like. This Seeing. But if you really get into the, the deep conversation with people, you want to find out, you know, do you have any problems? Are there any issues? What is your real long-term goal? Do you really want to know and learn proper form, or do you really just want to get out the door with your shoes? So it, we really want to get, you know, tighter with the clientele, I think. Twenty years ago, I ran marathons in flats. Without problem. It was when I started running trails and somebody put me in a drop shoe that I tore my tendon three times and was told you'll never run again and you have to wear these arch supports and all these things. I have flat feet and I went mostly barefoot until I was a child. 
and now that I'm running barefoot, I can run. Every time I tried to pick up running in a shoe that somebody would fit me in, which had that nice drop, I'd wind up in pain within days. <laughs> I've been running since December. I'm happy. Yeah. See, it, and it's so individual. Like when mm -hmm. I was originally started running, and I looked like I needed a stability shoe. You know, mm -hmm. I was put in that, and then I had plantar fasciitis, and I had all that good stuff. Switched to neutral, I was fine. So you really got to get feedback from people to kind of see what works best. Since this is a barefoot running workshop, I have to say that I really, really love running for the first time ever in my life. I believe that we really, and I just read the book last week, we were born to run and I don't know, I never felt like I had great genes or anything or even feet that were able to do such a thing, but now that I can go out, it's the greatest feeling I've ever had. I feel so alive and whenever I put shoes on, it just is not the same to run. Again. It's a freedom. I feel more human. And here, I have to say, and I admire that all these running shoe companies are trying to simulate it, but that's what they're trying to do. We're in the church of the shoe here, which I respect. And I got to thank anyone who organized this. Anyone who organized this is great. But this is there's a there's a real experience that doesn't doesn't require the shoe. It's really profound. If anyone has never tried it. Worth, worth yeah. I, think, I just want to say something. Uh, something that Dave said quite a while ago in, in his beginning, he referred to the shoes as tools. Um, I really like to look at shoes as tools. Um, going from, a, for me, obviously, being barefoot is, is the ideal. Same thing. It's, it brings a kid like enthusiasm to, to run. It's just it's really fun. Uh, that's why I run around barefoot now. But for me to accomplish a lot of my running goals, uh, I can't do it barefoot. Uh, it would just take way too long to train to, to be able to run in the conditions that I want to. So my goal is always to find the most minimal shoe to do the job. Uh, when I, I know I've talked to some people uh, that are shoe retailers, and they're really concerned that you know the whole barefoot minimalist thing was really going to hurt business. Um, all of the barefoot runners I know have way more shoes than <laughs> any traditional. Uh, I was looking at the shoes that I have at, at my house. Uh, I was going to bring some just in case somebody wanted to see them, forgetting that we're going to the shoe store. Um, and I have like 18 pairs of shoes right now. Uh, granted, I review them, but still, um, I probably have about seven different shoes that I would use for different conditions, depending on what I was doing. Um, and a big part of that has to do with winter, has to do with trail running, has to do with distance running. Um, but uh, it's, it's that idea that shoes are tools, I think, is, is a paradigm that you'll start seeing more often. And uh, I think shoes will go from being more of a match the shoe to the runner. Uh, the runner will figure out which qualities they like in a shoe and how they will uh, use that information to choose shoes that will best work as a tool for what their goals are for running. Um, I could see that becoming more popular, which uh, for shoe manufacturers and, and shoe retailers, um, obviously, is a, it's a good thing because 